first off, we're going to look at the uh, direct debit collections, and we're also going to be looking at um, some recurring sales and using recurring sales lines and recurring sales invoicing. And hopefully that will speed show how you can speed up invoicing and ultimately payments of invoices. So um, direct debit collections will start uh, on a customer. So there's a bit of setup involved with uh, direct debit collections. So you can see we've got a, a bank account code and I've set some payment terms up, which um, show that, that it's a direct debit and we can keep track of these customers. So to, to set up a, a direct debit, we need a direct debit mandate. So we start with uh, click, uh, click navigate uh, direct debit mandate. Uh, have a way to automatically give it an ID, select the uh, bank account code from earlier, set some validity as well. So if something's uh, going to expire for a year, so this one, for example, is going to uh, be run for a year. And I say the signature was uh, in 2019. You say uh, what, top, what type of payment we've got. So in this case, we've got a recurrent payment and how many, how many we're expecting. So let's say there's 12. So that's simple as that for um, a direct debit mandate. And we can use that alongside uh, recurring sales lines. So if we look at some uh, recurring sales lines, we go to navigate and sales and recurring sales lines. Uh, at the moment, we haven't got any, uh, so we can get one created. So what we can do is we can uh, come to here and click new. I'm going to call this services and services. So we give it a code and a description. And then as you can see, we can, we've got some lines available to us here. So we've got uh, what we can put as a comment, what we can put as a GL, an item, a resource, fixed asset, and a, an, an item charge, essentially what we can see when we do go to the sales invoice area. So I'm going to select an item and I'm going to select my services item. And in this case, I want to have three. Uh, we can also set up an amount here as well. So this will um, override any unit price you've got on the item uh, in the background. It will also override any um, uh, any customer data that you've, you've got set up to. So if we just click OK, then we've got, got that uh, created there. I'm going to put the same date period on this. Same date period on this. Uh, as you can see, we can also uh, override the payment method that would have been set up on the customer and so, as well as the payment terms. And here we can also pull through our direct debit mandate as well. There's some, some nice little feature on these recurring sales lines in that you can tell the system when you run the job to create invoices, uh, how you want the system to handle these. So for quotes, you've got the option to add them manually, automatically, or always ask. Uh, and it's the same for orders, invoices, and credit memos as well. So for, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to set these to automatic on this customer. Now I'm going to go ahead and create some sales invoices. So create sales invoice. So we've got the option here to create recurring sales invoices. When we do that, we need to fill in some information. So I'm going to set that to run for today. And I'm actually going to select my customer in this case. Once we do that, one invoice was created. So I'm going to I'm going to navigate that through here on the this Q option here. And there's my ongoing invoice. So if I click that. What we then see that my line's been automatically added. Um, we've got the information about the customer at the top, and we've also my direct debit mandate's also pulled through uh, automatically for me. So we can go ahead and post that. So as you can see, this is really really quick way of getting through the system to get get the information onto the sales invoice. So I'm not going to open that, but I am going to. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is create a direct debit collection. So I'm going to do that by navigating to direct debit collections, and all I have to do is uh, simply click new. Filling my um, my filters again, so uh, my filters are fine for this. It's going to create me a, an entry of a direct debit, as you can see. So I'll just click into that by clicking the, the number. It's created my uh, direct debit mandate. It's given me my mandate ID. It's going to tell me what information I've got. So it's my first payment. If I just hide the extra information, it's the first payment, what the status of it is, what it's applied to. So all in the background, everything's applied manually, uh, automatically, sorry. I then have the option to export the direct debit file. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then as you can see, it's just opened up there. And that's an example of the XML file. This is the standard out of the box XML file. So if you if you have a separate requirement for the bank, you can set these up via the data exchange definitions. Once the file's created, we can uh, then actually, as you can see, there's an option here at the top to post payment receipts. And what that'll do is it'll create a, um, a, a payment journal and apply the direct debit to the invoice.